scanners, they look nice, they're okay, um, but there's a lot of a lot of time needed in terms of take scanning something. I always say that you can put something in the virtual world, but getting it out into the physical world, that that's the computing problem and it's it's so difficult. I thought it was file print, Mike. <laughs> it is, <laughs> it is, it is file print. It's, uh, it's, it's getting getting to the file. It's not the file. It's print. So that, that was when he was facing this way, but this yeah. was when he's facing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's like control alt delete. Yeah. Um, I mean, one, one thing we haven't discussed. And you mentioned there about technology churn. The fact that we yeah. could buy equipment and it's soon out of date. Well, that's a big risk. Um, I guess one option we, we haven't talked about great in a great deal is rental. Yeah. I was going to say, we have this problem with uh, laser printers in the early days, colour laser printers. Um, you know, six months are out of date, there was something better on the market. And we took them on an upgrading lease, mm -hmm. which meant that as soon as something better was on the market, the company that supplied it automatically upgraded you, and every time, it's a great way to do it. When technology is moving like that. Mm -hmm. The only stumbling block I can see with that is the way that the money's got to be spent, or whether it's going to be spent in a certain time frame, or on, on capital equipment and not leasing and things. Is it pure but, capital money? Um, perhaps this is a question for, for Nick. Yeah, yeah. Time with you. Um, one of them would be considering getting the technician in to provide the technical support. Yeah, what, we've, what we haven't discussed with kind of digital yet, but what the next phase we're looking at doing is when the equipment's installed and everything else, what is then the ongoing process for that? And we may have to look at going out to tender for the ongoing support of those hubs after um, it's installed in there, which would be because of like the autumn time. And so we've just been having some discussions internally about you know, the rental side of things versus the buying, and then how do we then go and help them sustain those um, hubs after the equipment's in there. So we're, we're just in those discussions at the minute, but there is revenue in there for either a te the technical support or training people to come in and that sort of thing. Or links in, you know, it can be linked in with the schools or linked in with the university, depending on which area we're in, because some of the schools have got very good IT and technological support. They've probably said that they're thinking school um, in the helps it needs to be so we're looking at those options and that would be part of um, kind of digital role as a sort of sustainability plan so of those helps and the equipment in Absolutely, I mean, it's fair to say the top of my to do list at the moment is finding somebody to take this blessed knitting machine off my hat, uh, for example, because uh, there's no way I want to be supporting that thing uh, for any longer than I have to, uh, to be quite honest. Um, in terms of that, that, some of those other bits of uh, technology we saw, uh, so I know we've got a few sort of photographers and things in the room, we had the uh, What's it called? The Epic Scope? Giga Pan Epic Pro? Is it? The Giga Pan Epic Pro, uh, which sounds like the best feature in the world, but I don't think it is that. Uh, the, the, is that kind of thing that sort, sort, sort of would be useful? That's the thing that took, so it takes panoramic photos automatically for you, so they're all on the level and that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, that's, that's something I, I would find useful, because as far as I'm aware, there's no photographers in this area offering a 360 panorama photographic service. Mm. So. I'll be interested in trying to find some good locations and then we'll find a piece of kit like that with a view to um, <coughs> trying it out, getting familiar with how it works, how the software works, and then uh, taking some shots with it, going to see some prospective clients, um, might be, I don't know, stately homes, fancy garden, country house gardens, and say, sort of, look back and do your pictures like this if you're interested. Absolutely, and I guess it's kind of a kit that a number of photographers can use, and you won't necessarily need it in your position all the time. You'll only need it when you actually need it, basically. Well, it's, thing, it's a, it's a nice, borrowable bit of kit. <coughs> that's it, it's the sort of thing that, should it prove to be very, very popular, then I can warrant actually buying it. Mm. The, the other thing we, we, we've got to think about is utilisation. <coughs> Not just about utilisation of the technology that we put into the hubs, but how we can get the hubs utilised. So the classic example is the, um, the theatre in Lav. Um, if we were going to put some um, techno technology into there, we'd want to try and uh, ensure that that technology will draw in uh, the crowd for the theatre at a time when it's not used, like at the weekend. So, I don't know, maybe, maybe we could show 3D films or something like that. So there's, there's, a, re there's a reverse pull on the technology in that it's for businesses, but it, it should also assist the hubs in, the, in their function. And that's another um, tricky dimension to handle. And it's worth mentioning as well, we were supposed to have some other bits of kit here today, which unfortunately, for one reason or another, didn't, didn't quite make it. 
Um, and we'll need to have a think about a way in which we can maybe take some of that stuff on tour maybe over the next month or so. Maybe we could have some of it in the hubs. Just an example, I think we've got on the way, haven't we? It's a 3D camera yes. that can take yeah. photographs in 3D, that kind of thing. Might be able to be filmed in, in 3D as well, uh, video. Um, we'll, we'll have a 3D camcorder. Yeah, so 3D camcorder. Yeah. But the other thing that's really great is that, unfortunately, because uh, they only came, they literally only came to this country last week, we, have, we couldn't get it here. We're getting it on Monday, I think it's been delivered. It's a, it's a 55 inch screen that actually displays 3D video, but without the need for people to wear those silly glasses or anything like that. So it's actually so it's brand new. And uh, yeah, and it's, so it's a bit like a, if somebody's played on a Nintendo 3DS or something like that. It's a similar sort of thing, just blown up. So people will be able to take 3D videos and we'll be able to actually watch them in uh, without needing to look like perks wearing those, uh, those glasses we get at the cinema. So interesting. So that, that's another thing we've got. And we need to find a way of showing you guys that stuff. Um, another, there, there are, in the States, they've set up something through, um, they've set up a project called Fab Lab, which is similar to possibly what you're suggesting in terms of, they've got in there a suite of equipment, and together it's not all vastly expensive. Um, set up by Massachusetts Institute of Technology, specifically to try and set up Fab Labs around the world in areas that aren't normally used to this kind of equipment. So one of the first areas they set up a fab lab was in India, sort of helping local um, milk delivery people to keep their, their milk cool. So they used the fab lab to help construct something to keep their milk cool. But it, it, it's got in there the kind of things that, that we've looked at, 3D printers, um, simple CNC machines, um, laser cutters, uh, might have had a 3D scanner in there and a bit of software. And so and it's usually got somebody who's got technically savvy um, working, and it, it's for a, a community access type thing, but they're called Fab Labs. Brilliant. Okay. Yeah, it's a funny thing. I, actually, I was in Cardiff yesterday, and there they have something supported by the local council. It's called, they call it the Hack Space or something like that, I think, which sounds like something fairly similar. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. There's a yeah, like we well. need to go and have a look at that model and how <laughs> yeah. it might um, translate to, to what we're doing. There's one in Manchester and one in Sheffield. Yeah. yeah. There we are. Maybe, maybe Lauf or Skegness is next on that, on that list. Fran, are you going to um, say something? When we met at the Manor House at Alford, mm. it's sort of clicking in my mind, um, we talked about some means of having a loop of advertising that would be projected onto the wall within the Manor House when people were coming through to advertise local businesses. And I can't remember even how it's even supposed to be worked, but it would tie in well with Linda's. Yeah, it would. Um, Absolutely, yeah. So I don't know whether that's um, something you could look at because it would benefit all businesses. You know, if we're looking for something which is going to be useful to all, um, promotion of businesses is one of the sort of uh, underpinning uh, things about this, isn't it? Totally, and I think especially the projectors are definitely on our shortlist. And yeah. I think the thing for us to do though is that there are projectors, and then there are well, really exciting yeah, ones. And it's it's a, about what it was, it was what yeah. it did. Well, no, well, exactly. Yeah, it's yeah. funny no, how it does it, that sort of how, thing. How, whether it would be beneficial to other people. Mm. I think it's fair to say that the networking of small businesses is, is as important as the equipment. And we found mm. that um, just by starting this exercise, there is a small community out there of people who, who know of each other and who can share equipment between themselves. Mm. So um, trying to keep that virtual hub running, try and keep some equipment which... Um, if it's got business benefit outside of those sectors that we just talked about is on the radar. And one of the county councils, what they've done is put a large screen in one of the local Tesco's and then that is controlled over the internet and um, updated with all local events. So something like in Skegness when the So Far Festival is coming on and um, I belong to a Skegness business meeting and they say one of the problems there is when somebody arrives, they look at the clock tower, they go down the seafront and it's like, well, where do we go? What is there? And something like in Morrison's at Tesco that's owned by the council, uh, where you can project and schedule at different times local events that's going off. Well, a very good idea. In fact, it's quite funny you should mention skipping this in the SOAP Festival, because wait till you see the screen that's going to be at the, uh, the SOAP Festival. How is it described? The size of a medium house? Size of whatever that is. Whether that's a medium house in Skegness or somewhere else, I'm not entirely sure, but uh, no, no, it is a good idea and it's something we will be trying out at the SOAP Festival in, in collaboration with Arts Council and uh, East Lindsay Council and the, and the County Council 
demonstrating some of the stuff we've been doing with this project, but it is, I can't remember the actual dimensions. 70 something metres, the screen on the beach. <laughs> is that an LED screen? Sorry? Okay. An LED screen, yeah. yeah. The other thing we're trying to do is be more representative. So, um, you know, today we were supposed to have 55 small businesses uh, here, but we think there are more. You know, we, we can't have a feeling that there are people who are not turning up to these kind of events who need to have a voice. And, and if anyone's got any ideas about how we might reach them, and, and I'd encourage you to use your own networks, then we still want to do that because the more voices we have, the more likely we are to choose equipment which is um, relevant and useful. Um, so we're still bashing on at that. It's fair to say that um, when these development hubs, are, uh, development plans are drawn up for the hubs, <coughs> we're going to do that in a very transparent way. So we're going to publish those, um, those initial drafts on the website. We want your feedback. We'll start some um, online surveys, and you'll get another chance to, to shape exactly what's going to go into those hubs. As many chances as possible before we actually make that decision on um, what we'll be buying. And even at the point of when we're buying something, we're going to tell you what it is and how much it costs. Absolutely. Could you just make a comment? Because I've worked on the project for over four years in Barnsley, Doncaster, and Rotherham. I mentioned this to you over lunch. That the grants there went to individual businesses, individual photography firms, or whatever. It was £5,000. There was no collaboration. This oozes of collaboration and working together and getting businesses to get together and do stuff. It's a much better model than the Barnes and Doncaster Rosalind model because they went away and they did their own thing. And okay, there were networking meetings, but that wasn't the real driving force. There's real collaboration here, and there's a great potential to have that sustainability. Thank you. Well, it really is a clean sheet. I mean, you know, it, we could change our minds tomorrow on any of this um, as long as the community told us that that's what they wanted. So. Um, without your contributions, you know, we'll be lost. Um, Is there any future in, I mean, you may already be doing this, but I mean, the East Lindsay Messenger, uh, the, the county news and stuff that comes through everybody's door virtually in the whole county. Um, they're, they're usually looking for, in, for stuff to, of interest to fill their pages, aren't they? And I, I'm just wondering whether, um, you know, a renewed go through that route would, would reach some of the people that you're not reaching in other ways? I agree. I think there's going to be a, a marketing company uh, engaged with... We're getting a marketing campaign for the whole of the online revolution mm. side of things, but we are working with Messenger and County News mm. as well. Mm. It's just, I think they're either annually or quarterly or something. They're quarterly. And we've just missed the just right. the normal business, so we're hoping to get into but the next... In any case, I think yeah. even the local newspapers would do it. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, it's not as if it's a, it's not an advert they're going to charge you for. It's it's co it's copy for them, isn't it? <laughs> and they're pleased always to have good news stories of what's going on in their area. Well, exactly. Today, we'll be able to say that this event's been run yeah. and this yeah. has come out of exactly. it. So that'll give them a story that they'll yeah. be able to, you know, publish rather yeah. than you know say this is what might happen. Yeah. Absolutely. As someone who's trying to get the message out to people, and I get people coming back to me asking me to explain more and I try in my limpy way to explain but you know this is a whole world that I'm it's you know the technical side is the bit I I'm absolutely an innocent babe about so it's quite hard for me um, and I, I suppose what I I feel that I don't know that I've had a conversation with you where I said this is me this is my business this is this is the area where I feel I have a lack of knowledge and I'd like to develop it if I did that, if there was a, some sort of survey that came from Tim, from da, 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 saying, hello, we want to know more about you and your particular needs, yeah. I'd feel yeah. like you then knew what my needs were yeah. and that there was a channel of communication that yeah. was personalised. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that that's the sort of invitation to people that I know that I've been telling about, and that I've been a photographer I work for who is working today, so he can't come, but he would have, you know, there are people out there who would do or just need that extra push. And I'm just, I know you probably know all this stuff, you're, you're doing it all, but I'm just thinking personally that if, if there was that personal child communication which said, this is me, that's you, and there was a connection, people might engage better. Because I think, I think, I'm certainly sending out to loads of people, but I'm not seeing them, no. you know? 
Can I? Can I add to that? Sorry. Mm, yeah, can I just take... also add to that? There is a links artists forum if you wanted to reach out more to the actual creative practitioners in Lincolnshire. That's a Facebook group that has only been established a few months ago, but it's already got about 60 members, and it crosses. Uh, I mean, it goes across Lincolnshire, the whole of Lincolnshire. So, it's a good way of publicising the events. We did actually put a little link on for this yeah. event also. Dave and I have been publicising. Ah, oh, have you? Yeah, I mean, we came away with that. But I, I, yeah. just, I just wanted to mention that also to anybody else who's maybe involved with Absolutely. artists. It's a great Sign event. up, <laughs> and then you know about job opportunities and everything and what goes on also for the artists. Totally, yeah, we, know. we found out about that when Carol came into my office yeah. to shout at me while we weren't doing anything. <laughs> that that yeah. So, yeah. The so, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Do you want to pick up on that yeah. marketing point? Uh, Two responses to you, Nikki. I think you're absolutely right. I think there's a need, and one thing we're going to consider, I think what, what I want to do, um, certainly, is to do some one-to-one -one mm -hmm. surgeries with people. So you know, instead of, you know, ten, you know, it's very much a, a case of people signing up and we do surgeries. You know, it's been something we, we've indicated. You know, we ask people if they'd be interested in doing that. So some one-to-one -one time. So you know, making it directly relevant to your businesses mm -hmm. rather than it being more generic workshops so then we can you know then begin to sell some of those business benefits of what digital means to you as, as you know as freelancers or as businesses um, secondly I think we will be doing surveys and we'll make sure and you will tune the surveys that they are asking for your what you guys want and asking how it relates to you and getting more understanding of what you guys do as businesses because that, that is really important and just we understand fully that when we come and do workshops we can't we can't get down to that one-to-one -one level but it is certainly our intention to do that as much as we can okay. yeah that's right and we, we'll be doing that quite quickly as well in the next we phase will be those we to, yeah. <laughs> you may be already there and if not this particular project but elsewhere in, in the county the, the actual bit of counting that's done, you know, this lady, I'm a sole trader, I do this, this is what I describe myself as, not according to some standard industrial classification or whatever, this is what I call myself, I'm a photographer, I'm a uh, fine artist or whatever, and my turnover is between these figures, and the figures are given, simple survey monkey stuff, so you know who's out there, it's really important.